It's classroom time for all you men and women in the armed forces of the United Nations. Time for a rebroadcast of the College of Musical Knowledge. And here's the old professor himself, Kay Kaiser. Folks, how are y'all? Happy, happy. You're happy, Pappy. Well, that's fine. Because here we are holding class with the devil dogs of the air, the marine flyers near the little town of El Toro. <laughs> you know, El Toro means the bull. Well, I saw an El Toro who had just come back from overseas. He thought he recognized a pair of legs belonging to the gal he left behind, but she turned out to be the wrong girl. In other words, it's a wise bull that knows his own calves. <laughs> Of course, there's another little town around here named Laguna. And when the girl Marines here want to get exhilarated, they go to Laguna, which is just out of Long Beach. When they want to get exasperated, they go to Post Exchange, which is just out of everything. <laughs> well, I tell you. They, uh, and in the Post Exchange, they have the Leatherneck Club. <laughs> that Leatherneck Club. You know, there's so many men blowing foam off their glasses over there. They're, they're blowing so much foam off their glasses that last Saturday, a nearsighted pilot landed a grumman amphibian on the pool table. <laughs> oh, well. The marine air station here is right in the middle of the world's greatest bean field, yes. And do these daredevil marine pilots fly low through the bean patches here? Yesterday, one of them flew so low, the Navy beans saluted. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and, you know... And another Marine pilot tried to outdo him. He flew through the bean fields, then he cut through a pepper field. Then he called the control tower and said, Look, just toss in some meatballs when I buzz the mess hall and set 20 places for chili con carne. <laughs> well, and, and, and I want to tell you about that Marine coffee they serve you. Oh, it's so strong. That Marine coffee is so strong that when I dunk my breakfast roll in it, two raisins jumped off and yelled for artificial respiration. <laughs> By the way, Professor, why haven't they given a nickname to the girl Marine? For instance, when you see an Army girl, you say whack. When you see a Navy girl, you say way. When you see a Coast Guard girl, you say spar. Yes, and when I see a Marine girl, I say boing. <laughs> Please, Beth, stop rambling. These Marines want to start scrambling for that $115 in war bond prices. Okay, Dean, I'll keep shut up. It's time for a tune, and that ain't scuttlebutt. So come on, children, and yes, dance. Here we go.
Vance, it's time for the first Marine. Well, blow the starting trumpet there, Dean. <laughs> Escapables News Service. War news taken on the front, war news taken on the rear, Tijuana bet taken on the side. <laughs> All right, what's the first news item, Knucklehead? Flash dispatch from Marine Flyer. Yes, what does it say? Sighted sub, club, club, club. <laughs> now to El Toro medical news. Marine major, victim of anemia. How do you know the Marine major is a victim of anemia? Well, I passed his barracks last night, and I heard a doctor say, You're faded. <laughs> I guess it was Dr. Old Dr. Bones, huh? <laughs> oh, fine. Go ahead. Now the complaint department. A poem about cosmetics the girl Marines use. Oh, read. Oh, the paint you use ain't worth a nickel. You ought to try using better lipstick. <laughs> lipstick? Yeah, that's what gets all over their coffee couples. Oh, man, that's something. A Marine girl's lipstick. They do? <laughs> I don't know. Come on, now, what's next? Now for the, a dietary note. El Toro Marines declared vegetarian. Interesting, but how did you know? Well, they don't get anything to eat here but potatoes. All day long potatoes. Fried potatoes, mashed potatoes, boiled potatoes, creamed potatoes. Nothing but potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Little potatoes, big potatoes, thin potatoes, fat potatoes, green potatoes, red potatoes, old potatoes, new potatoes. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. All day long they hang around with old potatoes. And at night, and at night, they go to Santa Ana and hang around with the old tomatoes. <laughs> First contestant, Beth. The first contestant, and he is Corporal Bill. The first contestant is Corporal Bill Ross of Springfield, Illinois. <laughs> Say, uh, Bill Ross, now listen closely. Barbara Hopus of Warsaw, Indiana, says that apparently these Marine flyers don't know... Apparently these to flies, tell a lie. Yeah, the flies here don't know it's a sin to tell a lie because she says she heard two of these flies bragging about what terrific pilots they were. One Marine said, why, when I'm buzzing the field, I find the fly so close to the trees, the owls start singing. The owls start singing, I couldn't sleep a wink last night. The other Marine yawned and said, well, what a piker you are. Why, the day I took up a course there with six cylinders missing. It had a bent landing gear, no flap, a leaking oil line, and when I came across the field, I was flying so low the gophers were singing. What? Shoot you, baby. Boy, that's tall flying in line, ain't it? <laughs> there we go. All right, here we go with couple. Here's Miss Corporal Lynn Brown of Trenton, Missouri. Of Missouri. <laughs> Miss Lynn Brown, uh, sir, one of those patriotic Marine women, and boy, we're mighty proud to have you up here with us tonight. Here's Miss Lynn Brown. Corporal, El Toro means the bull. So for Elsie Parker of Dallas, Texas, will you distinguish between bull fiddle, bulldozer, bull run, and John Bull? Oh, that's a lot of bull, isn't it? <laughs> what about a bull fiddle? What's a bull fiddle? Well... <laughs> Um, what size violin would a bull fiddle be? Pretty good size. What? Uh, baseball? What's that? Baseball? Yes, that's it. That's baseball. There's one right behind you, right over there. There's one right over there. It's just has got the base, and he's violin. Here we go. Now, let's go. <laughs> now, what about bulldozer? Bulldozer. What's a bulldozer? What are you looking at me for? <laughs> no, really, what is a bulldozer? You've heard of them. You've heard of them when the construction gang to get to work. They say get out the bulldozer. We've got to make the air make the airfield here. You know we've got to lay, got to get the ground all level off. And uh, well, a bulldozer is a tractor pull, the a big heavy instrument that's got the shovel out in front or the thing. You know it pushes it and it does and it pulls and it's uh, well it's uh, it's such a dread 
Well, I, I guarantee you it ain't a spring for a watch. That I'll tell you now. All right. What about Bull Run? Battle of Bull Run. What war would you say that was in? That's a very civil question. What What war would you say the Battle of Bull Run was in? I think I'm being very civil to the lady, don't you? <laughs> Which war do you think is the Battle of Bull Run? I think it's a very civil question to ask you. <laughs> of course, I don't want to be revolutionary here, but the students. Civil War. Now, John Bull. What nation comes to your mind when you think of John Bull? Uncle Sam, for instance, stands for the United States of America. John Bull uh, is the figure that represents what uh, what nation? Um. No. Students! England. England, Great Britain. That's right. I'm sorry you missed that. She's a little nervous up there tonight. You'd be too in front of all these folks and knowing that the whole world was listening all around the world. You'd be a little nervous too. And now we got Sergeant John White, a wearer of the Purple Heart and two presidential citations, a veteran of Tarawa and Guadalcanal, Sergeant John White of North Long Beach, California. Red <laughs> Yes, sir. John, you're a little bit chest heavy there, ain't you, Daddy? Oh, uh, one-sided, you know. Yes, sir. Well, mighty proud to see you wearing them. Mighty glad to have you up here. Now, listen, John. I'll get it. Just... I dropped his name on the floor. I, I dropped his name. Of course, when he gets married, she'll drop her name. <laughs> Why'd he drop? Oh, you're already married. Sure. Well, then you ought to have more medals on you, Daddy. <laughs> now, look, John. Listen closely. Uh, uh, speaking of bulls, can you tell Seaman Dean Hayes of Fort Wyoming who the wild bull of the Pampas was? He was a prize fighter. He was a great fighter from... Well, Argentina. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. A great prize fighter from Argentina, down Argentina. The wild bull of the Pampas. He, he knocked Jack Dempsey through the ropes when he fought him quite a few, two years ago. Yes, sir. And I don't mean Serpo or Flippo or, um, or any of those things. Students! Purple! It was Furpo, that's right. Say, Jack Dempsey got knocked out of the ring by Furpo, and later Jack Dempsey said, just how lucky I was to get back in the ring and win the fight, believe me. <laughs> just how lucky I was to win, believe me. <laughs> Wild about Harry? Wild about Harry? Students! <laughs> you will never know. Well, I'm sorry you missed that. <laughs> first winner, Vance. The first winner. And he is with a perfect score all the way. The winner of the first round, contestant number one, Corporal Bill Ross of Springfield, Illinois. Hey! beautiful vision for these thousands of marine flyers. It's our stop, look at, and listen to gal, gorgeous Georgia Carroll. <laughs> and for all of you Leathernecks and your buddies who are fighting overseas, Georgia sings, Good night, wherever you are. May Dreams be pleasant dreams wherever you are. If only one little wish that I wish come true, I know that the angels will watch over you. Good night. I'll be with you, dear, no matter how near or far. With all my heart, I pray everything is all right, wherever you are. Good night.
the second round, first Leatherneck. The first, second round, first Leatherneck? Well, fine, Dean. Let's bring him on deck. Here's the first contestant, Sergeant Doyle Nye of Morristown, Indiana. <laughs> Say, Sergeant Kenneth Connell of Camp San Luis Obispo says three Marines were talking about cover girls. One of them said, my favorite cover girl is... Georgia. What, what, what? Georgia? Yes, it's Georgia. She's sitting right behind you. Turn around, take a look. <laughs> That's right. He said, my favorite cover girl is Georgia. Another one said, well, I like the gal that played in the picture cover girl. You know, um... Hayworth, I know what wool's selling for. Rita, uh, was it Rita? Rita, 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 that's right. The song was real Rita. Now, the third one said, the third Marine said, look, I'm not particular. Just get me out of El Toro for a while, and I'll even go out with... Let's dance. Who, me? Not you. Oh, gee. So folks don't be like Miriam. Use Aria. I know. Who would that be? All right. He said, just get me out here. I'll even go out with... Poor... Miriam. Who, who? Miriam. Poor Miriam. That's right. Yes, sir. Very good. And now, here we go with Corporal Dolores... Corporal... Corporal Dolores Ellers of Wayne, Nebraska. Beg your pardon? Ehlers. Ehlers. Yes, sir. Not, e- not Ellers. No. Well, either Ehlers or Ellers, it's boing. <laughs> now, listen. Say, Mr. Lewis, look, Corporal. Now, listen, Corporal. She's pretty, too. Doggone it. Say, Corporal, here's a right or wronger from Francis Temple of Detroit, and it's all about flying. Now, you listen to these statements and tell us which ones are right and which ones are wrong. Just say right or wrong. One. Gila monsters and helicopters are desert insects. Right or wrong? Wrong. You're right. That's wrong. One is and one ain't. Lightning is the English name for the P-38. Right or wrong? Lightning is the name for the English name for the P-38. Right. You're right. That's right. Third. Third, to taxi your plane means to ride to the field in a yellow cab. <laughs> to taxi your plane means to ride to the field in a yellow cab. Right or wrong? Well, uh, do I have... <laughs> is that right? Yeah, well, it's uh, wrong, really. You're right. That is wrong. Fourth... The plane that recently established a transcontinental record is called a constellation. Right or wrong? The constellation. Right. Wrong. You're wrong. That's right. Four, fifth. Girl, mar- girl marine stockings are called wind socks. Right or wrong? <laughs> Do I have to answer right that? Right or wrong? That's wrong. You're right. That is wrong. Thank you very much. Sergeant Jackson. Well, here we go with Sergeant Jackson Culp of Fort Worth, Texas. Texas, Texas. All right, say, Jackson, listen closely. Well, step up here. Let's be solid, Jackson. You marine flyers fly hellcats and wildcats, so Private William Ballard of Hawaii wants you to tell us what kind of cat this is. That's a hempcat. No, no, no. Now, the title of that song, hold it right there, says. The title of that song is, is, a, is Somebody on the Keys, a certain kind of a cat on the keys. Is it a large cat, a young cat? It's a kitten on kitten the keys. Kitten on the keys, yeah. that's right. What famous movie horror picture recently was about cats? Uh, the Cat and the Canary. Well, now, now, that could be. I was thinking of the cat people. What kids in the Sunny comic strips are cats? Cats. K-A-T-Z. Oh, what the cat kids? and jammer kids. Right, right. What other famous cat is in the cartoon comic strips? There's a certain famous cat in the comic strip. Uh, there's one in the comic strip that, uh, has, uh, let's see, this, this fellow that has foo in there. I can't think of the name of his cat, but do you know what, the, what I mean? Well, yes, um... <laughs> Yes, sir. Listen to this gold brick up here, boy. Felix! Felix! Felix is the one I'm thinking of. But uh, it's all right, Sarge. You really knew your cat. (laughs) All right. Second winner, Pat. The second winner and the winner is contestant number one, Sergeant Doyle Nye of Morristown, Indiana. (laughs) Oh, Mac, you never 
Mr. B. Here's a 1944 arrangement of Who, featuring our drama, Ormond Down. Drawing nine. Then get our two winning leathernecks out of the sky. This is easy as pie. And so for the first try, here is Corporal Bill Ross of Springfield. Now, Corporal, whether she be named Mary, Margaret, Helen, or Jane, and he be named Russ, Jack, or Ted, it makes no difference when love rears its lovely head. So at the suggestion of Tilly Stein of Brooklyn, our final round tonight will be called Boy Meets Girl. Names mean nothing when he finds the right gal. He just looks in her eyes and says... You have eyes for me. What are you? No, for me. Students! He says, you were meant for me. That's what he says to her. Who told Juliet you were meant for me? Who told you? Romeo. Ju- Romeo. Who told Wally Simpson you were meant for me? Oh, I'm king. Wasn't well, yes, the former king of England. Uh, and now the du- uh, w- Duke of Windsor. Yeah, yeah, what'd you say? Duke of Windsor. Absolutely right. That's very good. All right. And now here is Sergeant... Sergeant Doyle and I of Morris Town, Indiana, won the second round. Say, Morris, Seymour, uh, Seaman Eddie Calhoun, somewhere in the illusion, says there's no joy for a boy like the moment when the girl of his dreams says you're... Now, when the girl looks at you and says you're... The woman I love... Students! It says, you're the man I love. Gracie Allen says the man she loves is... Uh, Gracie Allen says the man... George she, Burns. George Burns. And Alice Faye says the man she loves is... Uh, uh, Students! <laughs> Bill Harris. That's exactly right. All right. Well, now, here we go with Corporal Bill Ross of Springfield, Illinois. Say, Bill, in our story, Dan Cupid's working awfully fast, and Mrs. L.S. Fane of Camp Taylor, Delaware, says that our boy now calls his gal... <laughs> One word. Calls her what? Sweetheart. Sweetheart, a fresh fellow. That's right. In the comic strip, who is Max's sweetheart? Tilly. Tilly the toilet. Who's little Abner's sweetheart? 
Daisy May. And who's Popeye's sweetheart? Olive oil. Say, you know a lot of fellow sweethearts, don't you? <laughs> All right, here we go. Here is Sergeant Doyle Nye. Morris, time for his last question. Say, Doris. Uh, now we come to our happy ending. The girl of his dreams and the man she loves become, became sweetheart. Then they tied the knot. And so now... <laughs> And now, Mr. and Mrs. is the name. Whose radio salutation includes Mr. and Mrs. North America? Whose radio salutation? The three, Mr. and Mrs. North America. Walter Winchell. Walter Winchell. That's right. Can you name a picture with Mr. in its title? Any song, any picture with a word? Mrs. Smith goes to Washington. Mrs. Smith goes to Washington. One with Mrs. in its title. Mrs. won the Academy Award last year. Uh, Greer Garson, Walter Pigeon, Mrs. Uh, yeah. Student! <laughs> Mrs. Miniver. All right, I'm sorry you missed that. <laughs> final winner, Pat. The final winner, and it is, it's a Marine. <laughs> it's Corporal Bill Ross from Springfield, Illinois. <laughs> Yes, sir. That's Corporal Bill Ross. He's a rolling Marine that gathers no more. My man, you were flying high. You must be glad, and so am I. I give you this $50 war bond first prize. And for the second high devil dog, it was easy as rolling off a log. He gets the $25 bond. Now, if the other four hold out their clamps, they'll each receive 10 in stamps. <laughs> Radio Service.